Hey guys, thank you for clicking on this video. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the We Create Vision 40 watt laser and utilizing the rotary tool. So I had this laser for a little bit now. I've done so many different tests and so many cool projects that I am obsessed with it. Like I recommend this laser to anyone who wants to kickstart a small business and start making handmade stuff from home. This is what the packaging looks like. I did some research online and it looks like installation of the rotary chuck is really not that difficult it's just a few screws so we're going to test that out we're gonna see installation how easy it is and get started so basically it's these two pieces that it comes with I'm not entirely sure how it works I believe this rotates the piece and this is what goes around the bottle or whatever you're using so i do have a piece here it is bisque fired with underglaze and i do want to try an engraving on it removing the top layer of the underglaze and showing i don't know some sort of pattern i'm really excited to see how it works i also have a piece that is leather hard and i've learned that you can also engrave leather hard items and after all that i want to show you how to make a custom stamp for your ceramic pieces or for example, any handmade pieces that you make. Basically, it's done with a rubbery material that you put in the laser and it cuts it out beautifully. I already tested it out on another sheet. Yeah, this is what it looks like. I just got it on Amazon. I'm gonna link it in my storefront, so check that out. And it came with two sheets. To be honest, if you're doing stamps, like. Look how big this sheet is. You're gonna be able to make a ton of stamps with just the one sheet. I'm gonna show you guys how to make this. It was really fun, really easy. And then you have a customized stamp for your pieces. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys shortly. Guys, I'm so silly. I forgot to put these rubbery tips to actually hold my piece. So I took off the chuck, I put these on with just three screws, really easy. Uh, it came with it, I just had no idea what to do with it. Fastening it with two screws. And I think we're almost done at this point. <laughs> Hey guys, so this is one of my failed slip casts and essentially I just want to use this to test out the settings, basically the power settings and the speed settings to see what works. I have an idea from the blue one that I worked on yesterday, but I want to see on something leather hard what settings would be good to give a really nice simple engraving so I can take some underglaze and kind of fill that area and you can see a really nice pattern. Let's test this out. Hey guys, I'm finally coming back with an update. So I actually learned so much about this laser through this process and I know that might sound silly but I really was tinkering around with the speed and the power settings and what kind of output I was getting I had some wins I had some losses but I think I am definitely on the right track and I'm so excited to show you guys what I made firstly I would consider this a failure but I would say that I'm on the right track but I, I took this piece and I engraved this flower pattern in and this is it you can see it here it's really pretty it took about 10 minutes to do that is because I had the speed very low I find that when the speed is lower it works a little bit better I think in my opinion for this one I actually took the engraving and took some underglaze, some blue underglaze, brushed it over the design and left it for about 15, 20 seconds. Took a sponge and removed the excess and it actually just went in all of the creases and all the voids. So I think for this reason, this might still be a success just because you're getting the pigment inside of the voids, which after the bisque firing, 
it might still be there. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I want to try this again on a um, on a mug, on a cylindrical mug, and see um, if this will work. I personally don't have a kiln at home. I have a very small one, but since I'm in an apartment. I don't feel comfortable running a kiln and I take my pieces to a local studio where they do it. But by the time it bisque fires and glaze fires, it takes about a month. So once I get this piece back, I definitely will show you the results. And this I would consider a success. So this has already undergone a bisque fired with the blue under glaze. So it is on there. It is much harder than this one. So since this has undergone the bisque phase, it does have that additional strength and the under glaze has kind of fused to it. Once this is fired, I'm assuming that underneath will be white and this will stay blue. And then we put a clear glaze on top. I'm hoping that's the case, but um, so far I'm thinking this should work out. I don't know. I love it. I love the idea of it. This is just a test piece, but I think it should work. I will follow up with you guys though. It was pretty simple to do. I found an SVG online. I put it into the software and then it did its thing. Very easy, very simple. And it is pretty rough to the touch, but after a coat of a clear glaze on top, I'm sure it'll smooth everything out and make it so much better. So yeah, this is a great test. I will follow up with you guys once I receive it, but so cute, so, so cute. And for the final item that I am so very much obsessed with is the stamp. So I used this rubbery material, like I mentioned before, and it worked so perfectly. I was able to make a perfect cut where I then 3D printed a base for and to be quite honest, it's, it's a very simple base, like super, super simple, nothing crazy. And the bottom here is the stamping part. And you can see the text is very, very clear. There's no imperfections or anything like that. For me, I'm so used to 3D printing, so I'm used to seeing noticeable imperfections on an item when you are printing something very small seeing this was so surprising because it's so like perfect and meticulous and even at a very small scale it is super detailed and i don't know i love it and it works really well i've tried it on a few pieces already and this is actually a piece that was already fired and look at that it doesn't come off obviously it's glazed and it looks amazing there's also different types of underglaze pads that you can get. This is what it looks like. It's called a potter's pad. And this is black ink, but I know it comes in, I think, gold for sure, but I don't know if it was blue or red. I'm not quite sure. But it literally just looks like an ink pad. It is specifically underglaze, so you just stamp it like a, like a regular stamp. So I'll do like a little demonstration to show you. So basically, I have my ink pad here. Press it down a little bit. And this is actually a piece I threw a few days ago and just trimmed it. And I'm actually gonna do like a transfer paper on there so I'm not gonna dip glaze it or anything. So I'm gonna stamp the bottom before bisque firing and let's see how it looks. Honestly, super simple. Take the stamp, put some ink on it. Okay, like this. There you go. And if you're not happy with how the stamp turned out, you can just brush it off with a sponge and try it again. But I think that's pretty good. Gets the point across. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining me on this experimentation. And I'm so excited to see how these pieces fire as well as some other pieces I'm gonna make with the laser engraver. So please stay tuned. Check out my affiliate link in the description as well as my Patreon, and I'll see you guys next time with a new video. Bye.